interviewing Nancy Easton, the founder of Wellness in the Schools, or WITS. We're so excited to learn about Nancy's experiences with WITS and with food. We watched your TEDx and read all about the program on your website, so we are excited to share with people. Well, thank you for watching my TED <laughs> and for learning about WITS on the website. It was very interesting. Oh, good. Um, so can you describe Wellness in the Schools for us? Sure. Well, you could probably describe it now that you've watched the TEDx, but I'll do it for you since I have that elevator pitch down. Um, so the way I describe wellness in the schools to most people, unlike you who've done all their research, is that it's like a AmeriCorps or a Peace Corps for the wellness world. Mm -hmm. So we hire coaches and we hire chefs and we place them in schools. And together they reinvent the school lunch experience. So healthy lunch, positive recess, back to class ready to focus and learn. Mm -hmm. With our long-term goal is that we're teaching children a lifetime of better health. We're teaching them habits that will last a lifetime through mm -hmm. our through our programs that we do with the coaches and the cooks. Mm -hmm. I can go much deeper than that, but that's a good elevator pitch, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what is the biggest success of the program? The biggest success? Um, you know, I actually think, again, on the spirit of working with culinary school graduates and with coaches, mm -hmm. Seeing people working with people is really, as you've probably heard in my TED talk, is how I believe change happens. Mm -hmm. So it's working with these amazing chefs and these amazing coaches who have then gone through training with us, but who also are doing this work because they are believe in change and they know change yeah. can happen. So they are doing this not to make a million dollars, not because they just want to punch a clock, but because they really want to work with children and make change. And so I think it, just working with these change agents is, is very positive for me and I think it's been the, it's the success of our program for sure, having mm -hmm. people on the ground who are not only skilled and talented, but also committed and passionate. Wow. So, uh, so and almost referring to the last question, what's the, but the opposite, mm -hmm. what's the hardest part of the hardest part, um, funny, on the same note, when you're working with people, right, people are different, they're not just, they're not just like robots, like, okay, do it this way today. So oh, there's always challenges when you're dealing with people, and certainly when you're dealing with children. But I think um, working in New York City is the largest city in this country, as you know. Yeah, yeah. And the lunch program serves 860,000 children every single day. Wow. Yes. <laughs> so that's second only to the military in this country, as far as large institutions, as far as institutional feeding. So, oh. <laughs> yeah, so the one word that, I would, that comes to mind is bureaucracy and sort of learning how to deal with a big, big, big bureaucracy, which is a big institution. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're this small private organization that we think we can do anything we want, but when you start to, uh, balancing that, you know, the change that we want with this big beast, that's a big <laughs> So when I speak about bureaucracy, essentially, it, as you said, Lila, that it's, it's an institution, usually, and what comes often with very large institutions or large anything is lots of blocks along the way, and sometimes called red tape or bureaucracy. So it's just like for you, where it's easy to like get from point A to point B, like going from your bedroom to your bathroom in the morning. Mm -hmm. In a bureaucracy, it would be very hard to do that. You'd have to sort of go through the elevator, then up the stairs, and then around the thing, and then you finally get to your bathroom. Which yes. is kind of it's sort of a funny comparison, but that's what I mean. It's sort of just hard to do things. Yeah. Um, so did anything you learn? So. Did anything when you, were you younger, learned from when you were young help you start WITS? You guys are good. <laughs> You're really good. Um, so everything. <laughs> so the truth is, sorry, when I was young or your age, I didn't really think that I was learning anything. But when you get to be my age, I'm sure every person you interview says this, you realize how much you learn from your parents and your teachers yeah. and everything that happened when you were young. But personally for wits uh, and, uh, and for life, so my mom um, was called Nature Lady by all the friends in the community because she used to keep a garden and she fed us really healthy. And it was at a time, like right, you guys are lucky, you're growing up at a time when the world knows that they should be feeding their children healthy. But in the 70s or the 60s when I grew up, um, most people, it was, it was kind of the beginning of, oh wow, we can make food fast and easy because for a good reason, women were going back into the workforce and women were mostly the people who were cooking at home, right? Mm -hmm. So like, how do we make this easier for, for women going back to work? And so everything was 
prepared and processed and it was all these fun, easy things that most people were doing. But my mom was not doing that. And she was making care of brownies and we were the only one with brown bread at the time. Believe it or not, everyone had white bread back then. And so it was, um, I, at the time I was sort of embarrassed by it and no one wanted to share lunches with me because no one wanted brown bread. But um, now I realize what an influence and how important that was for me to realize how all the things that she taught us and how that made me a strong um, person. And it, and it really taught me a lot about what I wanted to do with Wallace in the schools. Yeah. But I think generally, just sort of more importantly, both my parents taught me so many little life lessons. Like, you know, you make your bed in the morning and you accomplish that one task, it's gonna make you accomplish many more tasks throughout the, the day, right? Mm -hmm. And if you know you can get that one task done, you can get all, of, all of your tasks done. Even yeah. as simple as that may seem, it's kind of that philosophy. And so I think both my siblings and I all grew up really sort of, you know, wanting to feel that you wanna do something, right, in life. and. And particularly in, in my work, it's really a service to this. Mm -hmm. to, to, it's a nonprofit. It's serving these communities, and um, I've always really want had that spirit of wanting to give back, and I'm doing it sort of in the way that I know how. Um, that's really interesting. Sorry, I just talked a lot. It's okay. <laughs> it's actually very interesting. So you know, as a teacher, so I have to have to teach those things sometimes. Right? <laughs> I'm glad you think it's interesting. Yeah, it is. Um, so. Did you make any mistakes along the way? Um, and if you did, how did you learn from them? God, of course, like every minute I made a mistake. <laughs> and what I learned, well, you know, the only real mistakes in life are the ones that you don't learn from. So I think it's really how you learn how to handle your mistakes, right? Yeah. If you say, oh, it was someone else's fault, and oh, you know, he did that, and that's why I made a the mistake, then, then that's really not learning from mistakes. Do you know that? Is yep. it all, I'm sure it's always Lila's fault, and it's always Emily's fault, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's like what you don't do, but I can tell you what you do. No, I'm just kidding. So, um, <laughs> so you know, you just have to accept mistakes and learn from them. And like I said, we every we're still making mistakes. Uh, you know, the Wits model. I like to say it's sort of we have a perfected model now, but you know, you're always going to tweak it, and you're always going to make it better and better for the next school and the next person. So what do you learn? You learn, because I've made so many mistakes, I probably don't have enough time to tell you how I, things that I've learned. But I think, again, going back to working with the bureaucracy, like learning to be patient, and learning that change doesn't happen overnight, and learning that to listen to others, and to, yeah. to learn that, yes, you may have an idea, but um, and don't ever stay away from your focus and your goal, but sometimes you, you do need to listen to others to make sure that idea can happen because if it's going to happen in, in their world, they have to really accept that idea. Yeah. So I think those were some of the important lessons. So talking about food, what is the, the fa most favorite or popular dish served um, in the schools? In the schools? So everyone loves a salad bar, which is, yeah. which is great. Yeah. And we make homemade salad dressings, and the kids and the teachers all love those. Mm -hmm. So I think in general the salad bar, but uh, I think Bill might have talked about this in his interview, but one of our signature dish and one of the favorite dishes is also the vegetarian chili. Kids really love that and um, the parents like that as well. We make that a lot in the winter and also the kids make that in their wits lab, the cooking class. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, almost all the, the recipes that we make in the cooking classes are also recipes that they love in the cafeteria because as you guys know, if you make something yourself, yeah, you're gonna, you yeah. usually like it, right? So. Um, so I'd say everything, we make a kale salad, we make, um, yes we do, we make hummus in the winter, we make the vegetarian chili, mm -hmm. those, are our, those are our favorites, really. That sounds so good. Yeah. So, um, what is your favorite food or dish? Oh, okay, so, I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> um, I love everything, well I mean I love everything that's fresh and yeah. like, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just, processed. and not processed, so I, I'm a new gardener. I will say, living in New York City, I've always found a way to, to plant somewhere. And at one time, I had a really nice roof deck, and I had so many things growing out there. But now I actually have a real garden outside of the city. So anything out of that garden, right off the garden onto my plate, is certainly something that I love the most. And I love yeah. getting up on the weekend and seeing, like, what's there? But my favorite food uh, genre is Italian. I actually love Italian food. I love pasta, and I love sort of all the fresh veggies that come with Italian food, yeah. olive oil. Um, 
So yeah, I'd say Italian and just anything fresh. Yeah, and there's so much variety in Italian food. Exactly, exactly. That's why I like it so much. So if you could go anywhere in the world tonight for dinner, where would it be? So I know you're going to ask that too, and I actually can't answer that question because it wouldn't be very nice because I work with so many great chefs and so many great restaurants. So I'm not going to say that, but what I'm going to say so, so that my son can hear, where I really would like to go is to my house where my family can, can take from the garden and make me a homemade meal. That's what I want to go tonight. That's what I'm doing tonight too. <laughs> um, what is something simple people can do to be healthier? Lots of things that you can do to be healthier. So, walk more. So take the stairs instead of the elevator. Definitely drink as much water as you possibly can. Yeah. Um, one tip that we give to our families is to immediately eliminate not only all of the sodas in your house, but the juices. Believe it or not, so many juices have just as much sugar as sodas do, and um, you can get you know everything you need from, basically from water. So, and it's yeah. and it's cost savings too. And if you live in New York City. You, that's the heaviest thing in your grocery bag, so you don't have to carry that home. Yeah. So that's my very quick, I think, easy tip. Um, mm -hmm. And then on the physical side, certainly, certainly walking more. Yeah. So we love interviewing you, and thank you so much for giving some of your time to us today. Um, so we have a gift for you too. I've been eyeballing that. I have to admit. <laughs> So exciting. This is such a great idea, I can't even tell you. Yeah. When I first saw it, I thought it was really one of those companies that already has like the chips made for you, which yeah. I think taste bad and aren't as good for you. But I have a kit. Which one's your favorite? So uh, you have coconut. Coconut? coconut. So I've never, is it coconut oil? Uh, it's no, actually toasted coconut, coconut and there's a packet of it. And you sprinkle it on top or you toss it in between? Um, or you tell me what no, to do. No, you use this direction on the bottom. And then to make it? Yeah, that's This is awesome. Yeah. Are you ready to make me kale chips tonight? Yeah? <laughs> you both like the coconut the best? Yeah. Alright, so then we should make it. Thank you very much. This yeah, it was great. so interesting. It's so nice to talk to you guys. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs>